Okay, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Play Xbox Podcast, powered by Weapon Wheel Podcast, Weapon Wheel Patreon. I am your host, the Best Buy Kid Smooth, and I got Attic, my co-host, fresh out of the hurricane. What is up? Yeah, I wouldn't say I was in the hurricane, but the winds definitely just completely screwed over my area. Like the the I didn't like lose power entirely, but I lost internet multiple times. But yeah. What's funny is like a couple blocks up, they lost power completely. Uh, they they don't think that there's some areas not gonna have power till like like Friday. <clears throat> That's crazy. What place got hit the hardest? Was it Tennessee? It just pretty much the, up the whole chain. Mm. Like it's 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 bad. Like there's a bunch of places flooded out. Like I, my place is on like a hill i don't normally get any water in my basement even when it rains really bad but i had water in my basement mm. oh wow yeah um that's one of the main reasons why i don't want to like you know I, I i often think about going to the south but then have to consider the fact of like hurricanes and tornadoes and i know that stuff can like you know occur anywhere but like it's just we're in the times where it, it really gets uh, bad. But so hopefully, you know, everyone who's out there uh, in the eye of the storm, you know, recovering. Um, you, know, I, you know, obviously I'm um, praying that it recovers, um, everyone recovers and, you know, and get their stuff situated and, and that everybody, you know, seeks shelter and everyone's safe. Uh, hard times, man. Um Last week, we tried to do this podcast earlier, but obviously uh, we had some technical difficulties. Well, mainly you because you being impacted by the storm. So, you know, kept timing out the Internet. I might release some of those bloopers just as a like at the end of the year for Patreon members only. Just because those moments was when I'm sitting there talking and you're like just stuck in like <laughs> there were some funny moments. But I'm not going to lie. I might I, I'm holding on to those clips just in case. Um but uh, in the meantime, what you've been, what have you been able to play? I know, um, I know you're still actively streaming. I think uh, the uh, I saw you stream. Uh, you streamed up. Was it Metaphor? You, I think yeah, you had I like a lot of people more. showing, show, showed up for that uh, stream. Um, can you tell me about Metaphor and what we could expect? I know it comes out this month. Uh, looked like you were playing a Persona, <laughs> but uh, yeah. uh, how does and, this I mean, differ? It, it's persona but you know they they've restructured stuff to be in their image uh so you know instead of instead of the actual personas their arch beans you know just a lot of different scenarios like that what did you think of it when you were seeing did it look like persona yeah i thought you were playing uh you know a persona a persona game um I, and I know you you give me uh, a lot of slack for it because it's like turn based. The thing is, when I got into Persona Five, I was actually enjoying it. I was enjoying it, and if I had, I, I don't know what game came in where I had to put it down. I think I think it was Wolong. I think at the time uh, we got review access to that game, and I was actually looking forward to that game. But had had that not came in to came into discussion, I would have probably still played it. I don't know. But I would have finished it probably. Um, but my thing is based off the demo. Did you beat the demo? Uh huh. How long was that demo? About six hours. Oh, okay. So not okay. Still relatively long for a demo. Yeah, uh, well, I could have did a lot more. I didn't. So okay. As far as the game though, like the sub, the thing, the pet peeve about Persona for me is like, I hate being outside of the action. And that is the classes, uh, the schoolwork, the the relationship building, the, everything that takes place outside of the turn based action in the one to one story. You know what I mean? So where does metaphor land? Does it take all that fluff out or is it still pretty much there? It's there just in different ways. Like there's not a school anymore. Uh, you know, you don't got classrooms that you got to go to every day, but, you know, you still got your your skills that's related to everything, like, mm -hmm. you know, knowledge, all that's still in there. Uh, but the difference is, is like the presentation, they don't show it like they normally do in like the, the school kind of thing. It's like one of those things where 
Um, I don't necessarily know because, like I said, I didn't do a whole lot in the in the uh, the beta. I just did the core thing mm -hmm. because well, because like games like Metaphor and Persona, I didn't want to get like really into it, and then bam, the demo hit uh, ends. I was like, let me just you know experiment with what's going on, but not like really dig deep into the mechanics until the real game comes out. Yeah, I downloaded the demo. I meant to give it a try, but by the time I got access to the demo, freaking uh, Shattered Shattered uh, Space came out, you know. Um, uh, that deal, uh, the Starfield DLC is out. Um, you've played it. Um, I've played it, uh, but I'm going to say at the time of this uh, podcast, I would consider, I think what I've done so far in the uh, in Shattered Space is what would be equivalent to a prologue, right? Uh, the opening sequence, uh, I got to Varun. I haven't done anything Varun specific. I everything Neither I did I. was pretty much exactly the same place. Um, I was streaming it, but because of Planet Xbox, I just like, yo, I gotta go, guys. <laughs> yeah, um, I like so far, uh, I, I, I like the theme. Uh, now I, I think I'm playing this. I'm, I, I don't think there's a right or wrong way to play Starfield, but. Starfield is one of those games where people are going to have different experiences, right? Um, I have two save files for Starfield. One of them is a, a, a just a brand new playthrough with a different character build, still early in a, a story. Uh, I haven't... Um, I don't even think I've... I haven't romanced um, anyone yet, but I don't think I was going to. Actually... Wow. Actually, no, I did progress a little uh, halfway because i've i met um the uh the, the the starborn um like he came in and 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 i think sam co got hurt or i think he's ki got killed actually and in, in my second playthrough so um and then my other my original save file is the one where i did like new game plus like I think two or three times or whatever. Uh, but the thing is, is that, so I started, I just did it on my original save file. I have no companions as a, you know, as a starborn, no spoiler. I don't have like a companion, but there's, I see people playing uh, with companions that whether it be um, Sarah or whether it be the, what's her, what's the girl's name? Adrian, what's her name? Uh, the one that's actually, her background is from Varun. She's from Varun. Um, I haven't got her yet. I, I need like, I need to do the story. Probably I'll do it offline before I start again. Yeah, and, I um, I got her in my first play. I th actually, I think both of my playthroughs. I got. I just didn't. The thing is, in my first playthrough, I didn't romance her. I wanted Sarah. So I I I I, I, rom I pretty much had a uh, romance Sarah. I successfully done that. Um, I did. I didn't wasn't really paying attention. I think I think I've had her as a companion. For like maybe a couple of missions, but I end up swapping her. I the only people I primarily kept as companions in my prime my first playthrough of Starfield was uh Sarah and Sam. Um for whatever reason. But um but so the thing is I'm doing this more so alone. So there's there's this additional lore uh that that you can get by just having like um a companion there. And so I my, my I was like I I'm like, damn, like you know, I would like to have like not. I almost wish I didn't do the new game plus and just like finish the game, uh, but it didn't like really touch it and then just go off base from there. But um, it's good, man. Star Starfield is is set up in in such a way where they can have all these experiences, they can have these moments, and they could be unrelated to each other, but still, you know, impact the game, and and they don't have to be related to. The core of the story, when you consider the planets, the galaxies, you can go through it and it can all just make sense. Um, but I'm happy with it uh, because the game has obviously improved. It it it, it looks better. It plays better. Uh, you got the rover now. Um, and just getting back into the groove of that gameplay loop of Starfield, which was a unique gameplay loop. Uh, I like that this thing is more like focus this time around um from the reviews i've uh read and, and heard and saw like they really say like, they really hone in like you know you don't like everything is going to take place in that one spot so i guess it's going to be like let there's not gonna be no ship action uh but 
I say that uh, they they emphasize that you can leave, come and go as you please. But as far as this DLC um, all taking place on Varun, they say that the camp, the the, the story is approximately 10 hours. Uh, how do you feel about that? Um, as long as there's plenty of uh, stuff on the side content, uh, you know, even if, you know, you just do the main story, I think 10 hours is good. You know, as long as the lore is there, they tell it in good ways. I think that's probably fair. Yeah. I hope uh, it came with an additional 200 gamer score. So that's always fun. Always good to uh, earn uh, new achievements. I'm looking forward to playing it, um, to finishing up. I would have played today, but dude, work was so exhausting. I got home, had to walk the dog, had to get myself something to eat. By the time I got back in the house, I... I almost doved off on the couch and then you and then you called. <laughs> uh, so um, but like I, I probably won't get to play. Look at the time. I probably won't play t- uh, tonight, but I'm probably going to pick it back up. I think I'll probably be able to pick it up back up uh, either. Uh, I want to say probably I, I, t- I typically do basketball on Wednesdays, but I'll probably pick it up uh, by like Wednesday, uh, Thursday and, and try to get it done over the weekend. Um, Starfields, it's one of those games where, like, I can actually just play that game and be and be fine. Like, I don't rotate other. When I was playing Starfield the first time, I wasn't rotating other games. I was playing uh, uh, Starfield itself, and, and it just reminded me how much fun I had with the game, how good it is, and it's good to see it in a different light uh, with new things to do, new quests to do. Um, it was my game of the year last year. Um, nothing has changed uh, changed that, and I'm I'm happy that the expansion is finally um, finally out. Yeah, uh, it's definitely so far. Uh, you know, just the the enemies that I fought was kind of like bizarre. I'm sure you can, you know, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, they're I'm called. They're like over them. I forgot the, the the name they call them, but they're like I want to say they're like possessed by something, right? This light. Um, that takes over them and they come very aggressive and it's not just like humanoids it's like even like the creatures get possessed by these things and um you you kill them while they're in that form and then they become you know uh, the thing that sucks is like when i first my first encounter with them i thought what was going to happen was you know you know I, i i kill them in that form and then i just they become like just regular humans again and be fine but no you actually they're they're just done and they they return in human form but and then you get to loot them and they have like some some extra stuff you know what the crazy thing that bothered me is that when you go into new game plus you start off with nothing you get like basic stuff you have like no weapons no nothing so all the those host of weapons that i had and ships all gone right so and I also had no money. Like in this playthrough, I had no money to buy the rover is like twenty five thousand credits. So when uh starting to, to get the rover, what I did was in one of my new game plays, I just started doing like some odd jobs, some um jobs that were around the areas just to collect some credits. And uh when I got enough to buy the rover, it was broke again, got to the planet to do the 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 expansion, and um I had to really start from scratch, get my money. I had to use the little the, the little knife that you get as a starborn, and uh, uh, to fight my way through the first few waves of enemies until I was able to get like a uh, like a legit gun. And now my inventory is looking better, and um, I got some like med kits and stuff like that. And just getting back to the ease of things, man. Uh, I've been playing uh, like p- just purely like that second third person mode over the shoulder. What, what point of view have you been taking? During the um, DLC, um, and to be honest with you, I've just been, you know, rocking. Like I ain't really been focused too much on like the DLC or anything. Uh, where uh, now I did do the initial one, but <clears throat> I guess my priority for the most part was just to like regain some of the stuff I lost in the new game plus. Yeah, but that's like a, a good gun. Yeah, I. I stole, um, I accidentally, I didn't know you could shoot from the rover. So when I bought it, like, you know, like the first plane on you, it's who, who, who does the new Atlanta that's run by the UNC, right? The U S uh, the free, it's not the free, what's the, the colony United colonies, um, runs, uh, new Atlantis. 
So when I got the rover, I got in it, just wanted to drive around. And I hit the uh, I, I hit the trigger button, and I, I guess I started to shoot one of them, and then literally the whole entire radar just turned red. So I had to get off. Like I, I don't whatever thing I had on that is it went unresolved. I had to leave the planet. That's what actually would initiated my freaking uh, premature start to the DLC. I need to. I, I wanted to leave the planet because I didn't want to get and it just being a constant battle uh, with them. Cause I was not uh, prepared uh, to do that, but um, you know, Starfield. Like again, people love to hate on the game. I haven't been checking what anybody's been saying. I know. Uh, I, I don't know what the Steam numbers is looking like. I don't know. I don't even know what the Metacritic. It's did, mixed. Did they live the, the? Oh yeah, somebody did freaking uh uh tag me in a image uh for Steam. I heard. I haven't seen it, but but you know when it comes to Steam. You can never really guarantee if it's the actual quality of the game or yeah. it's just like something that, uh, you know, they they're making a statement on. Yeah, so. I don't, I don't, I don't rely on Steam for like reviews. I don't rely on their current users count. I don't rely on their reviews because I think my opinion on uh, PC gamers and that that you no know, Steam dwellers, um, I think uh, they're not to share like they i don't think they should be allowed in general public so i don't i don't i don't think they're i don't value their opinions to any degree so when people show me things with steam it's like and (laughs) i value their opinion but at the same time like you know when when you use the mixed reviews Mm -hmm. just in statements like the the hell divers thing Mm -hmm. sometimes it's hard to determine is it mixed reviews because it doesn't run good? Mm-hmm. Is it because uh, that would only apply to piece to PC? So you yeah. know if that yeah. if the console versions run okay or run better, then you know the mixed reviews look skewed. But at the same time, I do have to disagree with you. I, I'm 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 grateful that you know they stand up for it. But at the mm-hmm. same time, like you know it's kind of a double edged sword. Yeah. No, I, I just think everything gets really overblown with uh, PC, but. Be uh it, because of the the climate that we're in with gaming and and this uh platform agnosity that's here you know Steam has been the new de- weapon against console wars it's that's the new weapon I don't it, it, it you know how ironic that is they weaponized Steam to fight console wars so a platform completely unrelated. <laughs> To the console wars and anything that so it's like well steam is a neutral metric we're going to use that you know if steam says it's bad it's a bad game if there's no players on steam despite there being hundreds or thousands of people playing on xbox or on playstation is there's no players on steam then nobody's playing it it's like it's like the equivalent to like not having games right it's like <laughs> that, that it's it's insane uh, but I think that's uh, it's a little bit of that that's going on. Um, speaking of, let's uh, talk about. Uh, so Game Pass has some drops, and it's sort of confusing because a lot of uh, so there's some games going on there, but now they're. Um, Did you see the Alter game got delayed? The Altered. Alters that game that's going in Game Pass. Mm-mm. It got delayed. That's what I saw ACG post. Oh no. So um, they um, what I was trying to say was that the freaking um, I forget what I was saying. The Game Pass drops, right? They now are including like you know those those other tiers, like standard and like uh cloud pc ultimate the confusing thing about it now because mlb the show which is always launches on game pass day one they they added that as coming to game pass standard but it's like okay that's it's already in game pass so unless you got uh, it it's, it's starting to get confusing so now we're going to start seeing like games being added right that's a so that's technically already in a service years. They took last year's and it's like a Game Pass standard now, and it's not regular Game Pass anymore. Yeah, so that's going to be um, uh, fun times ahead with that. 
There's also um oh, somebody just posted five hours ago. Master Detective Archives Rain Code Plus. You this is like some anime stuff. It's coming to Xbox. Oh no, it actually released. Um the um si- Sifu uh coming to Game Pass. Uh I, you know, did not, you know, I, when it came to Xbox, obviously, because it was this launched as a PlayStation exclusive for some time, and then it um launched on Xbox, I think almost maybe a year later, and now it's finally on Game Pass. So and I, I said on X Good things come to those that wait. I'll be downloading that game on Game Pass for sure. I have it on PlayStation. Of course. It's a good game. I just. Did you finish it? I don't know. I, no, I didn't finish it. I, I wasn't like. I, I could tell it's a good game. I just wasn't vibing with the gameplay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And that's how I felt about that game. Um, what's that shit with the rabbit with the big ass arm? Uh, was it. Uh, oh, you, you know what Dunk? I'm talking about? Oh my gunk? goodness! No, it's not gunk. The gunk was a, that's a human. Um, no, nah, it was a PlayStation game that finally came to Xbox. It, you're like a rabbit or some chinchilla, and he has like a big ass arm. Fist, right? That's what it is. Fist, F I S T. Um, yeah, like if I, like people loved it. I think people loved it because it was a PlayStation exclusive. But I was like, man, this game is like, it's uh, it's not all that. Um, Let's see here. Um, Ubisoft. Um, back in the news. Uh, there. So Assassin's Creed was delayed. Um, you already know my opinion on this, but I don't think this was. We, well, I, for, I forget. We never actually recorded fully the podcast. Um, I'm upset about the delay. I said this on Weapon Well. I'm I'm a, I'm upset about the delay because I don't think the delay is for any technical purpose. I don't think the delay is for I don't think the delay is warranted. I feel like this is a PR delay, like a public relations delay. And um because this delay happened, it makes me disgusted with gamers. I know you complain a lot about toxic po- uh, positivity, but there's also uh, a lot of te- uh, toxic negativity, uh, that crab mentality. Um, negativity attracts more negative people. The hordes, of negative people, negative people can delay a game. Negative people can cancel a game. Negative people can stop something. They can stop progression. And um, I think that's exactly what happened. Is like uh, Ubisoft bent the knee to these freaking basement dwellers. And um, and and they they pretty much caved to them. Um, I think everything about Assassin's Creed, uh, this new game, any all the overanalyzing, I think is overblown. And you can't be reactive to a lot of this shit. You can't be overreactive. Now I understand Star Wars Outlaws didn't do what it was supposed to do. Um, it, I think it was a commercial failure in terms of uh, sales. Um, I still like the, the game, enjoy the game. One of my favorite games uh, this year. I did definitely have fun with it. Of course, it had its flaws, and I'm not afraid to, you know, talk about them. But you know, at the end of the day, it was an enjoyable product, um, and I and I thoroughly had fun playing it. Um, so if they if if they more so did it because they're afraid that it's going to flop, or it's because the game is going to release and it's being met and overly scrutinized because. There's a there's a black samurai. I mean, I, my thing is you don't. Del- I don't think they should delay the game unless the, unless they're gonna patch the black out of them. Don't delay the game. I think I was like, wh- why 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 sat why cater to these people? They're these people are very horrible. They're bad for gaming. They're bad for the industry. They're bad for business. And their uh their opinion, their complaints really should not be taken into consideration. Um, because at the end of the day. So it's let me video ask you games. Let, mm-hmm. let me ask you this then. Um, you, you're you very big on Square Enix, mm-hmm. you know, uh, making business decisions on like exclusivity, not bringing certain games. Mm-hmm. These games don't naturally sell well on Xbox platforms. So mm-hmm. it, it makes a little bit of sense why they wouldn't just put them naturally on the platform. It's not good for business, but should, should Bandai Name came sell, game sell well on 
Xbox. The reason why Square Enix games don't sell on Xbox because they're inconsistent. They you don't know what game is coming to Xbox, and they typically put out their throwaways on Xbox. They don't put their major games on Xbox. They put out their throwaways, their games that they need to fill up little revenue drops until their big release. Their major releases are typically PlayStation exclusive, and and that also that's hurting them. But carry on. Okay, let me. <clears throat> Because well, it's, not, it's what I'm mainly saying is, you know, sometimes stuff, even if it doesn't make business sense, it's just the thing that they feel like they have to do. Mm -hmm. is, is it is it true or not? I don't know. Uh, I don't think they're going. Uh, I, I think it was a mixture of both. I think the game could have needed a couple more months uh, in the oven. But I do think there are, you know, some criticisms that the, uh, you know, the Japanese citizens gave on the game that they're also going back and like fixing some of the parts of the game that doesn't uh, make sense as much like society wise in Japan. I mean, you know, did you see the, uh, the thing that they got mad over uh, those gates that's in Japan? Yeah, bad some gates. No, it, it's, it's called something specific, but essentially what they did is they like, this thing is like sacred to them. It's, it's, it's those gates that you saw at the end of the uh, uh, when uh, when we dropped those bombs over there. Uh, it's always in those pictures. It's like that that shrine gate or whatever. Oh, the it's atomic called. bomb. But yeah, one of them. Uh, I can't remember what it was Assassin's Creed Shadow Gate issues. Yeah, I, I'd have to look for it, but it was like a statue or something. And essentially, like, they did something, they put one of those things, and it was very disrespectful to, like, the Japanese, uh, you know, culture to, to do what they did. Can't remember what it was. I'm sure there's videos out there. It, 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 whatever it is, it starts with a T. I'm sure a comment section would, uh, uh, would comment it. But I, I don't think, I don't think logistically they did a lot of research like they should have making a game in Japan to this degree. Because uh, you can clearly see just off of the feedback that they're getting. I think that they missed TGS on purpose. I don't think they wanted uh, the Japanese audience to play this game. Uh, and now all of a sudden it's delayed. Uh, Tom Henderson, uh, he said something about the game. Did you read all the stuff that Tom Henderson put out? No, not nothing outside of his initial, I think, uh, I think he posted about the delay of the previews or something like that. But no, I haven't been. Um, I haven't been able to f uh, follow outside of you know the delay and just the banter that I see online. But any official reporting or like information on the game, I have not seen. All right, so I'm looking now. There, uh, like it's like a giant thing of updates on mm -hmm. Assassin's Creed Future. Uh, Assassin's Creed Future. They, I can't remember. There's someone that covered it really good. I just they they covered it like who who's all the people that cover stuff? Uh, was, Tom it, Henderson, Tom Warren. Uh, there's uh, Jeff Grubb. There's uh, um, no the the people that used to that put the bulletin things. You know how like they they uh, you don't have to like watch like a conference. They'll just put the bulletins and saying this is what it was. Uh, just keep going. I'll look for it. Okay, but um, uh, yeah, but I again, I I disagree with the delay personally. I think I say this all the time. Ubisoft is one of the best publishers. They're one of the most consistent publishers. Uh, they put out games often. Um, now not every game is a freaking mega hit, you know, but they're all pretty much fairly decent experiences. They typically have a gym. They drop about four games a year. One of them's typically, uh, I can get jiggy with this type of uh, game when they do it. Um, but uh, yeah, man. Um, hopefully, um, I, I I am mad at the new release date though because it's I think it's I think it's going to imp have impact on another game that I'm extremely and that I'm anticipating. And that is Avowed, which Avowed was moved to, like, February 18th. And um, the Assassin's Creed Shadows has been moved to February, what, 14th? And it's like, what are they going to do? They, are, are they going to keep that date? Are they going to stand on business?
being that they don't have to compete for sales or are they going to delay because like I I really don't there's a lot of games come out in February I don't think they really should move it because even though there's a lot of games coming out in February I don't think any of them are like freaking blockbusters you know Assassin's Creed is going to do what it does but you know what I mean is the uh, Assassin's Creed is not some something you run away from um for a game um neither and then I know Kingdom Come 2 Deliverance is that what it's called um yeah comes out i don't think that that the first game was it was said it was good i think the game will be good but it wasn't doing nothing like crazy as far as numbers where uh, uh, any game should avoid it i know there's a monster hunter game coming out um around that time period and i'm not sure they didn't give a exact window for ghosts of yahtzee right i, mean, I know i'm yutsi yitsi I'm not. I know I'm not saying that correctly. That's the new Ghost of Tsushima game. Um, I, I, I guess I'm assuming it's coming out in like maybe Q2, Q3. Um, but Avowed, man. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm upset about the Assassin's Creed Shadows game because that was like for the rest of this year. I think the the two the the really the three main games I was looking forward to for to close out the year that I was going to play was Assassin's Creed Shadows. That was going to be uh, a major one. And um, obviously Starfield uh, uh, Shattered Space and Call of Duty Black Ops 6, which I, I've, I've had a great time with the beta. Looking forward to that game. Um, and of course, Indiana Jones, which is later in the year. That's in December. So I'm not it's not really on my radar until we get until until after freaking Thanksgiving at this point. All right. So I'm looking at it. Um. I do remember them saying that because I can't find like any of those bulletins. Like, there's people. Uh, oh yeah, here it is. Here it is. Uh, so uh, you say is not to be removed. The team has been actively addressing many of the historical and cultural concerns, which started because the games revealed following uh, following external play test and were accelerated further following the game's initial reveal and mass feedback. Changing some of Yusei's story and how he's betrayed in the game. Fixing architect, uh, architectural details and ensuring that the game's historically uh, grounded while, fi uh, while fitting in the Assassin's Creed universe. Mm -hmm. so, such issues that have been caught internally before the game's reveal, uh, especially given Ubisoft's strict uh, asset approval process. The issues fell through the cracks because historical experts were brought into the project much later than uh -huh. usual for a project of this magnitude. So once again, like people that would actually consult on these kind of things, they, they didn't bring them in until probably the story was designed. Like it, it's just, it, it's a, it's a clusterfuck, man. And, and I, I disagree with you on this. Cause like, to me, if these are the things that's needed to make the game actually, you know, take off more i'm for it like I, i'm for it like i i want the game to do good right now people are trying to you know put woke terms and stuff on it and if the game came out and had a lot of stuff that didn't make sense and it did look like you say was shoehorned into the story at the last minute how bad do you think that would look in the overall grand scheme of things but if they're going back and changing some of these details to make it make more sense that he's in japan you're going to get a better product. So I'm okay with that. You think you're getting a better product. We're getting, a, I don't think, I, mean, I don't, we think, don't know what we're I getting. I don't think three, I don't think a three months is changing anything. It, well, it, you don't, you, you don't even know if it's going to be three months. That shit might get delayed again. Like, I, I hope not. Um, I hope not because this year has been trash, trash for video games. Um, very trash, but, um, Shout out to Ubisoft. You guys uh, make great games. There's just a lot of haters in this industry. A lot of industry pundits who think they're think think they got say, but they're just you know double cheeked and uh, corny. Um, yeah. So uh, so so you, I think it's a mixture of both. I think the game could definitely use more time to cook, and also they want to do certain things and I don't think this has anything to do with the people that you're referring to like the people that's you know speaking woke or anything I think this is to appeal the Japanese uh consumers this is to appeal like 
uh, the people in Japan that, you know, like scratching their head on certain decisions they made. Uh, you know, they did say uh, that the people that would consult on these type of events was brought in later. Mm -hmm. So there is probably stuff that needs to be touched on. Like, like my thing to you is like, would you prefer a worse product? I don't think, I don't think uh, there was a worse product. I feel like the game they revealed, Ubisoft is very consistent. I feel like we we're going to get the game that they revealed. I don't, if you were satisfied, anybody who was interested in buying the game and was satisfied with what they were getting, I don't think it's going to be a matter of a worse product. I'm not afraid of the product being bad uh, at all. I, I don't I I don't care about those level but, but of details. Hasn't their game, like Ubisoft games don't come out like the cleanest sometimes. Like they, but they, they don't come out the, broken either. The last broken game that they've done, they come out buggy, not broken. No, I'll agree with you on that, but they do come out buggy. No, the one the last real buggy game was freaking Watch Dogs Legions. That's like the only real one I would say was buggy. I think everything else was kind of on on par or like really before and after that were were pretty good. Um, we can move on though. Yeah, uh, but you know, shout out to uh, Ubisoft. Um, what else uh, do we got going on, man? Um, what else do TGS? we have? TGS. TGS. Yes, my goodness. Um, TGS to me was a letdown. And it was a letdown because Square Enix. That's it. I it's only so, so much Xbox can do. Like so I downloaded. I feel like Square Enix was like the bulk of their games, though. Like, yeah, but it, it, again, they they give us the throwaways. They don't give us the you, main you think stuff. The pixel collection is throwaway. Yes. How old is the shit? They gave us a a a a, 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 a year old port of games that came out thirty years ago. Like, and I understand that, but coming like this is where I will agree with certain people on their perspective. You like, I know you don't play these games, so it, it's one thing to say, "Oh, you know, I, I felt like they could have done better." It's another thing to say it lets you down personally, because then it makes me feel like you're upset because you you're gonna play these games and they didn't give you the one you wanted. And it's just like, but I know you don't play these games, so it's just like, how did it let you down? Like. Is like, that me like, down? Like, being a being a huge Final Fantasy fan like I am, I am I'm thrilled. Now I, I do. I would love remake and rebirth and even sixteen, knowing it's horrible game to come to the platform. But I'm so excited that I finally have the bulk of the best Final Fantasies that's ever been made on the Xbox platform. Um, it let again. I'm let down because I want Square Enix to make a bigger push you make us you 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 do good on you make a bigger push you you're all in all xbox when you bring your big games to xbox when you bring your final fantasy 7s when you bring your final fantasy 16s that's the final fantasy 16 is the only one i would actually really play because it's more it feels more it looks more western than anything um but that you would like i don't know you might not like remake and rebirth i don't know it's it's definitely uh you know a little bit more fast-paced than the typical Final Fantasy is a little bit more mm. of a balance than 16, but I don't know if it would keep your attention in the long span of things. Yeah. Um, I think um, I, 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 the thing is, the, th the games I do want to see on Xbox, um, the thing, I, I want to see Final Fantasy 16. I want to see, and I actually want to, I'm still, uh, I want to see Forspoken. Um, but we didn't I, get we didn't I'm get those. A hundred percent okay on Forspoken. <laughs> like nah, that, I, that, I, that game can sit where but but the thing is like did you beat Forspoken? No, I don't own Forspoken. Then why like it'd be different if it was a good game. I played the demo like, if, and I felt But my thing my thing with you Kit Smooth is like it'd be different if it was a good game and you just know that the platform needs it. That's a bad game and you're still pushing for it to come to the bad pla uh, to, to the platform. Yeah, because I'm... Like the next thing I know, you're going to say you want Babylon's Fall on the platform. No, no, like, it's just that I'm a fan of, like, the thing is, I don't... Me, personally, the the thing about good games, uh, that's all subjective, right? A good game to you uh, uh, may be a bad game to me and vice versa. So, e even though the critics say my, Forspoken if, is bad, you, personally, I found things that, about the game that I like and I would actually play. I just didn't want to... I just didn't buy it on PlayStation. I wasn't at the time. I so, was against seventy dollars games. So, 
Okay, then do you are you if that game came to Xbox, would you buy it or does that have to be a Game Pass buy? Uh I would buy it if it if it I would day one it if it if it launched on Xbox at a discounted rate because I don't think the game is st- I don't think it wor- it's worth seventy dollars so, today. I think so they're if, still gonna at least try to get sixty from you. No, no, if they if they put in there with a fifty dollar okay, price what about tag, forty. What about forty? Forty fifty, I buy it. Forty fifty, I buy it. I don't like if forty, I'll definitely fifty. You, I would still buy it. Yeah. You mm-hmm. dropping the fuck out of that game? Right? No, I don't think I'd drop it. I mean, you you can you can, if you want to try it, you can. Yeah, the demo. You, I got the demo still installed. Oh no, you can just log into my account, download it, and log into your account on PlayStation and play it. Like, why you? Why you like, buy it? I will send a review code. Oh yeah, um, man, that's too much work. <laughs> Played one, oh, so that's too much work than mm-hmm. waiting months and months to. And I don't think you know that's what? coming. Like, you, you you know what? What I might do actually, if I land if I land a PS5 Pro, I'll I'll buy it uh, when a PS5 Pro come out because that that game runs. No shit on PlayStation Five. Um, no, I mean it's not about you landing a PS5 actually, Pro. Go to the website and and pre-order it because clearly the no, you know the, the it's there. no no no. It's I'm available. waiting. For, I'm waiting for game uh, GameStop to get it. I'm not putting spending my hard earned money on that shit. I'm I'm a I'm a oh yeah, <laughs> that's right. You got pay. Uh, yeah, things. I'm gonna use. I'm gonna try to. Yeah, I gotta. Yeah, I can't. I can't. No. But looking 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 forward. Uh, I, I, that's what it would think about TGS, man. It's like no, not to say that they weren't good games there. Obviously, there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of shadow drops, um, which was which is good. I downloaded a few games. Um, the Mana games came. Uh, obviously, the Pixel remasters. Um, they showed off some new games that I thought looked good. Um, I don't know if they got release dates, but there was like this one game where you kept getting, um, you could just take. Uh, likeness of other individuals like in a world and you use them um that that looks that looked dope um overall I, the quality the stuff that they showed was great i'm it's just that you know you want you, when you go to when you go to tokyo game show if i'm xbox i'm going to tokyo game show i'm walking out with like some some sort of banger you know what i mean some uh mic drops but shout out I agree. there was there was no mic drops it was just like Essentially, to me, the reason that I was okay with it, like, look, am I saying it was an amazing show? No, but as being a huge Final Fantasy head that's beat all these old Final Fantasies, I've always wanted them on the Xbox platform, and I've always said that this game needs to be on it. I think maybe a Game Pass Pixel Collection would have been, uh, like, uh, cherry on top, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. cherry on top of the cake, but Mm -hmm. uh, my thing is, like, I just want them on the platform, Uh, you know? And uh, let me look, actually, because I'm going to see what those what the pixel collection is on like if if it's anywhere on the the top sold game uh i think it's like top 50 maybe top paid one two let me see if it's on here first it's yeah def- it is on here oh like what? one uh oh, damn space marines 2 is the top most buy- paid game on xbox right now it's yeah. above 2k okay so one two three four five six Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. Uh, oh, so, so it's, mo- okay, it's being sold. It's selling more than Dead Rising is. Um, it's up there with the Ultra version of Space Marines too. Okay. So, um, yeah, and, and see, here's the thing. That's that's decent, uh, because at the end of the day, it's just like. The way people act on the internet, mm-hmm. there, there, there wouldn't be games ever on on the top paid games. They, they literally act like the Xbox consumer doesn't buy anything, like at all, ever. And like, I will admit that there is like a stigma going on. If it's not in Game Pass, they're not going to pick it up. Uh, True. But uh, I don't think that's with everything. I do think there are people that do that. But it's like I said, for the most part, if you have that mentality... <laughs> I'm curious if you were going to buy that game from the start, even if it didn't come to Game Pass. Uh, that's my mentality most of the time. I would, I, 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 I don't buy, I don't buy games a day one anymore unless it's something I'm heavily anticipated. Like there's one game I'm going to throw a chance on that's not made by Xbox and that's not made by, by it might actually be. Let me see who. Let me find out. Bandai's probably published it. Is this game called Unknown Nine? Like I'm, I'm like I'm like really I think that's by like Deck Thirteen or something like that maybe, 
Um, I'm eyeing that game. I'm very eyeing that, that, that game. That Threads of Time or whatever it was called, that was at a, the TGS looked really good. Like, I, yeah. I'm, I'm there 100% for that title. Yeah. It's like, look, it comes down to it. The game is selling relatively okay. Uh, you know, 20. It's probably bounced back between 15 to 20. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, once again, these are old games. Uh, but I'm curious what that would be if it would have been there day one when it was released on its counterparts. Uh, that, I think that's the biggest issue. You know, it's like the, it's, it's essentially what God of War comes out for PlayStation. Mm-hmm. Does the, the PC version sell as well as the PlayStation versions? No, because at that time, they're not as popular. They're not as in demand as they was. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, and that doesn't mean that people are like, oh, you know, addicts trying to say that this game's going to sell better on Xbox. No. And people sitting there say, oh, it's going to sell better on uh, PlayStation. I hope so. It's got double the install base. God, I hope so. If any game is outsold by Xbox, that's an L on PlayStation. I got a question for you. Um, Mighty Keith. No, sometimes. Yeah, are we, are we about to talk about uh, Metaphor? Yeah. Because the tweet, I don't know if my tweet went through because my Twitter was acting up when I was trying to quote tweet them. I, it, it's clear that Mighty Keith is a you know, PlayStation fanboy. And I, I didn't appreciate his, uh, he says, he says, he said Atlas sucks at marketing. Uh, they should never have uh, partner uh, give Xbox the marketing. People think he said people on the lines that people think this is an Xbox exclusive, like or something like that. So, how does that make the marketing bad? Okay, so expo- so he said. That people think it's an Xbox exclusive. Actually, let me. I'm gonna read the exact tweet because I, I I have no uh, clue what he said because I, uh, I I don't follow Mighty Keith. Ever since he tried to dogpile me that one time, yeah. uh, it's like nah. You and what's funny is I used to be a real big fan of his, but it's just like dude, like it's one thing to like disagree with someone. It's another thing to send your 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 community after me, which is fine. I've been dogpiled by just about anyone you could think of, but it's just like it. it you shouldn't be doing that if you have that many followers. Like, to, to someone that's got 5,000 followers on Twitter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, let me... Hold on, bro. Like, I, I definitely want to get this exact tweet because it drove me insane um, for a little bit. He probably gonna, deleted it. He probably <laughs> did because it, I kept having trouble quote t- tweeting it. Um, I know he got in, uh, like a lot of heat for it. Yeah, he would have sent this. <sighs> Damn, man. So what was your interpretation of what you think? Ah, there we go. Found it. He says, Atlas is terrible at marketing. They should have never let Xbox have the rights to advertising. JRPGs do not sell well over there. I still got I still got people telling me they thought Metaphor was an Xbox exclusive. Get this game when it comes out, man. It's fire. I feel like that's the point of of, of marketing. Like, yeah, I was like, I was. So my point with there was like, okay, how is Atlas terrible at marketing? One, they ain't that. I mean, they, they 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 clearly, you know, got a bag to let somebody else market it, and then so it's not their problem with the marketing. And then you said they should ne- never let Xbox have rights to advertising. Okay, so you answered your first question uh, or your first statement. And he says JRPGs not sell well there. I still got people telling me they thought metaphor was an xbox exclusive so that means xbox is actually finally doing their job and marketing a game that that it, it, job well done marketing job done if people are coming to you saying hey this is an xbox exclusive or they're asking for this but that means xbox marketing dollars are working they're working but my thing is why have 
what 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 is there to be angry about? Because two things are being done. You know the game exists, and you know the game's coming to Xbox. That's all that matters. That doesn't mean the marketing's bad. You know the game exists, so the marketing reach is getting somewhere, and you know the game is coming to Xbox. So that means Xbox's marketing is, is the awareness is working. Um so I didn't understand his like I didn't understand that angle and why it was like uh like necessary. It's like you don't want to give uh Xbox didn't have the rights because JRPGs don't sell well there. Well, they got the rights so they can so that RPG can sell there. That that's the whole purpose of retaining the marketing rights. But then my thing is why do gamers really get Really, and and, and, I, and I'm probably asking the wrong question because I used to get you know set off with marketing rights. But my thing is, you're a, this dude's a PlayStation fan. He's a PlayStation guy. He's going to play it on PlayStation. So why do you care if Xbox has marketing rights? It, it doesn't add any more oomph to it. It's not like the game's not going to sell. The game, if PlayStation gamers are play, if PlayStations are those dominant gamers that they say they are, they're gonna they're gonna buy it, right? That that's what they do. They buy games. The game is going to sell despite. Who has the marketing, right? Because PlayStation gamers buy games. This game's not launching on Game Pass. But um, hopefully it does well. The demo is good. You said some I I heard some people saying game of the year. You think you think this is gonna come I, in and I steal it? I definitely think it's a contender. I don't know if like it'll win it, but it's a contender. As long as the game, the whole game is what I played like mm. the whole time. Yeah. Because okay. you know sometimes they'll they'll rip like the best portions of the game and yeah, say yeah. here's a demo and the rest of the game is just it's just garbage <laughs> like yeah no i i, I'm a, I definitely want to uh play the demo but i'm gonna get i'm gonna get to the demo wait, wait when does this game come out early october or is it end of october um the end of like two weeks oh shoot because i because I, I would definitely give it a try after starfield after well, starfield. i um i did ask for a review copy so okay well, let's, uh, is, is that I actually, I actually, I did something I don't normally do. I asked okay. Xbox. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Okay. That might actually, you know, that might actually be, uh, be a way to, to do that. But like, yeah, I'll definitely, you know, give it a, um, oh, you'll it a have try. it regardless. Cause even yeah. if I don't get it, you think I'm not going to play it? No, 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 no. Yeah, you, this is definitely your uh, your alley, man. Um, but you know, what? I would, I would hope this game wins Game of the Year. If I hope it's that good, I would. You hope know what I want? I know it's not gonna happen, but I would love Dragon Ball win Game. <laughs> Why? You is that you know that game's outselling supposedly uh, Call of Duty on PlayStation right now? Stop Dragon Ball it. Z. Stop it. Oh yeah, it is. It is. The pre order. For what? Like what it, it? It, this is the most hyped I've ever seen a Dragon Ball game ever. But for what though? What is so I'm special about more this hype. one? Because they back in the day, they used to have Tenkai, uh, Budokai, and Tenkaichi. Budokai was yeah. pretty much the uh, the the side by side typical fighting thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, kind of like you see fighters right now. Dragon Ball C fighters. Mm -hmm. Tenkaichi was like. A, a battlefield that you could fly around, do moves, and mm. they stopped doing it after Tenkaichi 3. Like, mm -hmm. there, it might have been two. I, I think there was three. I don't know. But so essentially, this, and this happened a long time ago. We haven't oh. seen a Tenkaichi in forever. And they announced this one and they named it whatever it is now. And, you know, it, it, it goes all the way up to current. You know, you, you see all the power, the tournament of power. Mm -hmm. Like, it, 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 this is. By far, probably one of my most hyped games of the year. I think I'm going to enjoy Metaphor more in the long scheme of things, but my nostalgia part of me is is, is more anticipating um, uh, Dragon Ball more. That's because I, I. How often have you seen me pay for like a deluxe edition or something? Yeah, I don't see it unless it. Right. Come, that's crazy. Wait, is this game? Is this a multi-platform game or is this exclusive to PlayStation? No, it's it's on everything. Unfortunately, it's not a crossplay game though. Yeah, I'm I'm there day one there, and, and I'm buying the hundred dollar edition just to play it three days early. Dude, that is stupid. That is yeah, stupid. Well, uh, that is 
a hundred dollars to play Dragon Ball Z game. What was the last g great Dragon Ball Z game that fighters? And I don't like the uh, the typical like head to head fighter and type of game. But Tenkaichi, it's got like all the characters you can think of. It looks like it's got um, a. It looks like it's got a like a what if type of storyline where like a typical like there's a character on the name Jaren. And a lot of people compare him to like, it's like Dragon Ball Z spy, uh, Superman. He even dressed up in the red, just like Superman, just not like the cape and stuff. And like Goku is like fighting this dude, getting destroyed. Like it, it's not even a fight. And like they sit there teaming up on him. There was one time it was five people on Jaren. And, 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 but he's just so powerful. Like he could punch when he, when he throws punches that the, the, the air will hit you before his fist will. Okay. Okay. And so, um, and this comes out when? Uh, the 8th. Of October. Yes. Okay. Well, the 11th, if you don't get the three-day thing, but we get in the three-day thing. They're selling so. you through early access to freaking Dragon Ball Z, man. I just, um, okay. Well, all right. So, um, I guess, I guess it's real. I guess it's a uh, real hype over there. Um, I, you know, it's crazy. I've tried to play two Dragon Ball Z games and I can't, I can't do it. The, the, the game, I, I don't know. I don't like flying in games, man. I guess, I guess that's what it is. Um, the, the way that, yeah, it just, it just doesn't work for me, man. I, I tried, um, I, I really tried, but I, hopefully, hopefully it's yeah, good. It's hopefully, not it's grand adventure. I get you. Oh, come man. on, you. man. Come on. Yes. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully it's good though. If you if you like it, I love it. Right. <laughs> Shout out to Jack Move Johnny. Um, man, uh, I'm trying to think. Is uh, there was also the PlayStation State to Play? Um, that was a big thing that it was happened. Horrible. And yeah, the, and again, the biggest thing from there was the ghosts of yeah. I still don't know the name. It sounds horrible that I keep saying it. Uh, bad new ghost game. Just give your general idea. We don't really got to go too much into the state of play. Um, it's not old news at this point. We yeah, already talked about it on weapon. Well, no, no, the state state of play. Um, I thought again, like I, I state of play. They just it's bad timing. It's always they always do it when I'm, when I'm at work and whatnot, and I have to recap it. But the only interesting thing about it was the Ghost of Tsushima, and to me that didn't look it didn't look uh, impressive enough. And not not saying that the game doesn't look good. I'm just saying like uh, for Ghost of Tsushima one to be you know a PS4 game, you know it looked very you know very good and whatnot. Um, and for this to be a PS5 Pro enhanced game, I didn't see I didn't see anything that says, "Oh man, this is like next generation," um, and it's coming out next year. Um, good luck. I mean, good luck. I mean, I, you know, I I don't know. I mean, this is uh, they showed some cool things. A couple of games that they were shown also available on Xbox. Shout out to Xbox for sharing uh, the the little. You know brochures with all yeah, the upcoming they, 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 games. That, that, yeah. was, that was kind of savage. They like all yeah. this stuff's coming to us too, pretty much. Yeah, um, but yeah, man. Um, no, nah, it's uh, the state of plays are you know you, you either like them or love them. That's the expectation. We kind of know what to expect from them. Um, I wasn't really. I, it didn't do anything for me. Um, honestly, it didn't even it didn't even sell me a PS5 Pro. Like not even the tweets from Capcom and all these other publishers with their little. Uh, updates for PS5 Pro. Again, I'm interested in it because it's, it's the new hotness and, and there, there is some intrigue there. Um, but, like, I won't lose sleep if I don't get one. And, no, if I have an opportunity get, to get one, I'll get one, yeah, uh, via trade-ins. As I said, if I, I can trade in a bunch of stuff and get it and I'll do it. But if I... if Outside of that, right, I don't think... The state of play sold me on anything. It didn't. It didn't sell me yeah, on a game that I want to buy. Think and it was didn't. designed to. But I why? Why? Is, is why we, weren't we they wanted to? Huh? Why wouldn't they design it to sell you anything though? You no, know, they're, they're designed to sell you games, but I don't mm. think they're trying to sell you a PlayStation Five Pro. Like I think PlayStation signs so many marketing contract deals, and they don't have these events all the time. So sometimes they're forced to do a state of play like because of a contract and not necessarily because they have anything to show. 
Yeah, you're right, because they got to showcase some of these games, right? And um, it, they, they're doing their partners a disservice when they don't have a like an E3 or whatever. So the state of play is, is good. It's probably a well, now I think about it, a well uh, utilization of their marketing dollars. They're not spending money on all these presentations. But I feel like since 20... Since 2020, since they, you know, the, the 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 presentations got all digital, I don't think it really should cost them money to to stream a showcase if they're doing it all at their studios, right? You know, so all just, it should, all this should do is just cost some time to cut trailers. Part of me thinks they they showed you go uh, the new Ghost game just because they they wanted to show you something. They didn't want this event being like a complete uh, dust because. Like, there wasn't a whole lot to be shown at this event, but they still showed you what they showed you. So part of me thinks that, you know, maybe they showed you what uh, this because they know uh, they can't do another event without having nothing to show. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. Um, but, uh, yeah, let's... um. Let's uh, get ready to close this out. Um, do you have anything going on that you want to uh, speak of? Or, um, pretty much that. Uh, I am going to be finally playing um, Chain together with J Dub and, and and King this week. We were supposed to do it last week, but King had some stuff that came up at the last minute. Uh, but we would definitely be uh, ready this weekend. And, uh, you know, I've been streaming. I'm streaming Tim Tim. Because my community feels like I should try, since I'm a Pokemon fan, I should try that out. So I'm going to be trying that out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a... Uh... Um, Tim Tim, yeah. I, I remember that came out came out a couple years ago. The Pokemon... Uh, uh want to be or whatever but um it's they nintendo didn't try to sue them right mm -hmm. no all right so all right they're only bullying the smaller guys okay um plus yeah. i feel like they might want to go that direction i think there's a couple scenarios one they do have an idea of maybe doing something similar to what uh power worlds is doing or two they have no intentions on on like shutting down the game and they know legally they can't but they're gonna like try to bluff them and get like a free like 10 15 million from them for nothing like it's like settle and we'll, this will go away don't settle and we'll you'll spend way more trying to make this settle you know what i'm saying yeah 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 no i got you um it comes in it was like this is where you give us 50 mil that's in envelope one envelope two you're gonna eventually give us a hundred mil. Like, <laughs> yeah, Nintendo. I got my gripes with them. Some big bullies on the block, but uh, um, but oh yeah, yeah. Did Zelda, Zelda did, did it come out yet? The new Zelda game. Yeah. What's yeah. the Metacritic on that? Uh, I think like high eighties. I don't know yet. Oh, oh, so it's not a Gotti. Okay. Yeah, well, not a what? It's it's not a Gotti. Is there a particular reason that it can't be a god because of that? I mean, I, I mean, usually. I mean, high eighties is still pretty relevant, isn't it? Definitely, definitely, definitely. I'm not mean, saying I'm not saying. I mean, I would love for it. You consider you consider Starfield a game of the year, and it got an eighty or what three? Yeah, I consider Gotti. Uh, no, well, based off the way the, the, the industry standards changes depending on you know w what year it is, they they change the standard on what is. Considered uh, a, a gaudy contender, what Metacritic score is. So, but, um, ah. um, yeah, so I'm pretty much, uh, there, there was an, some update from, uh, the Tangle talking about Hi Fi Rush that they had like a six month old build that they were working on at the time that they got the studio got closed. It doesn't really mean anything to be honest with you. It doesn't. Um, they hired new people. Obviously, other people moved on from the job uh, at the time of the closure. Uh, they confirmed that Microsoft still owns uh, uh, Ghostwire Tokyo and the Evil Within. And um, that I wonder began. if they'll eventually sell them that. If I like Hi Fi Rush 2 is a success mm. and they want them to branch out a little bit. I don't. Here's the thing like, if they're willing to sell it, 
I don't see a reason why Microsoft would keep it because, like, who's going to make that game? Yeah, it's true. I mean, they, they got a whole lot of studios, but again, yeah, you would, you well, know, I mean, Japanese studio. You could look at go. something like as simple as Banjo Kazooie. You mean to tell me because Rare won't make it, like, no one can make it? So it's like, if you ain't going to make a Banjo Kazooie when you have plenty of studios that are capable of making that type of game under your belt, what you give me faith that they're going to make another uh, Evil Within? Or another Tokyo game, Ghostwire Tokyo. I don't think that's the case. Like, yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, hopefully, uh, I I don't know. I, maybe they, you know, they work with like, you no, know, Capcom, for those. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Who knows? Um, but yeah, man. Uh, it's been real. Uh. Shout out to the Patreon. I, I do want to give a quick apology for the last episode that we have. You guys were complaining about me uh, chewing on the podcast, eating, uh, snacking, and whatnot. I, I will do better. Uh, and, I mean, I'm sorry that you guys all <laughs> had to endure that. But, like, sometimes a brother be hungry. And, uh, hey, but uh, I'll be better. I'll eat before the podcast. Or after the podcast, uh, but they were going in on me in the comment section. So uh, uh, hopefully this podcast was a lot cleaner. Um, but, you know, thank you guys for watching and joining us, being subscribed to the Patreon, being subscribed to uh, Weapon Will and supporting Play Xbox podcast. As always, guys, Xbox is the best box. I am the best bot. Good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe. We are out of here. Peace. Peace.